Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the final episode of the Sell What You Know show in season two. Uh, my name is Cordelia. I am the Rebellious Business Coach, and I am your host here at the Sell What You Know show. And this is our final episode of the season. But it is we are we have saved the best for last because I've got a really good session for you guys today. Um, so for those of you that haven't got your camera on, get them turned on so we can all be in the room together. Just pretend that we're at an in-person event and we can get to meet each other. That would be really awesome. Of course, if you can't do that because you're uh, driving or doing anything, oper operating heavy machinery, then don't <laughs> leave it off. That's fine. Um, so what we've got in store for you today is we have Gordon Grant here. Um, Gordon, hello. Give us a wave. Loving the new purple backlight. Looks very good. Um, welcome. And Gordon is going to be delivering a session that's going to help you optimize. He is Mr. Optimize. He is Mr. Get Some Time Back. Um, and we're going to speak into that shortly. Firstly, before I bring Gordon out, I want to let you know, we've had... Um, I don't even know. I've lost count. Taryn, any ideas how many episodes we've done in season two of The Swick Show? Uh, we're be... over 20. I think we're 21, right. 22. So if you have, if this is your first time here, if you've missed all the previous ones, we've I've basically collated all of my favorite public speakers, entrepreneurs, people that have really been movers and shakers in the entrepreneurial world, like making it happen, walking the walk, talking the talk, getting success. And I've been bringing them to the Sell What You Know show to give you some insights and tips and tricks some resources some trainings on helping you with your business. And so we've now got a big backlog of those that you can go back and watch any of the replays on. And they are on the Sell What You Know YouTube channel. So go and check those out because we've had some amazing speakers over the last few weeks. What we love to do at this show to kick things off before we get into uh, the meat and potatoes, which Gordon Grant is going to be bringing, has been, has brought with him, and he's going to be sharing them with us um, shortly. I love to ask you what has been your biggest win over the course of the last week, and let's. This is the final show of the series, right? So let's let's go out with a bang. I would love to hear some of your wins, some of your successes from building your business over the last week, over the last couple of weeks. Um, that you would love to share with the group, because I think it's really important for us to take a second to stop and recognize the progress that we're making, but also to inspire others around us as well. As we do that, this is all about building a community. Um, it's all about coming together as a collective to do this as a group, right? You don't need to do this on your own, which is what building this community is all about. And um, I would love to hear from some of you guys what your biggest wins have been uh, lately. So um, Sabina's put in the comments, feeling the euphoria and depression that is sales and moving forward with being okay with that and keep showing up for more. I love that. Sabina, that's really powerful. Gordon's going to be speaking into a little bit of this today. Gordon's going to be talking about how to not lose yourself in business. And I think one of the things is, is that, we have to deal with a lot of rejection as a business owner. <laughs> so possibly something that we spend our lives avoiding is being rejected. But when you have a business, especially when you know when you're in when you're doing sales calls, you're only going to close a percentage of them, right? You're never going to close all of them. We're looking at like between twenty five and fifty percent close rate on sales calls. So there is that kind of air of rejection that comes up when it comes to sales and then we do we grow tough skin right <laughs> we grow tough skin and we inc increase our and in increase the size of our confidence because confidence is a muscle just by keep doing it over and over again but sabina that's awesome and that i'm 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 sure that it sounds like you've got euphoria in there that you're smashing it um but yeah it's it's a roller coaster sometimes this entrepreneurship ride it really is the highs and the lows. Has anyone got any wins they want to share? Come out, unmute um, and share with us. Let me turn on the ability for you to unmute yourself um, and come out and share with us a win. Anyone? Gabor normally saves me at this point and I've seen the, you're in the building, Gabor. Welcome. It's good to have you here. Anybody got a win that they would love to share with the group? Going once, going twice. Okay, well, I would love to share a win. And it's been that, it is that, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to run this show over the last few months. And um, 
to have built such an awesome community here. And I really want to acknowledge Taryn because Taryn is in the background a lot of the time. You don't see the amount of work she puts in, but Taryn is not only during this show has she been working to keep everything going, but she has moved from South Africa to Scotland. <laughs> and it's, um, yeah, Gordon's happy about that because he's Scottish. Um, but yeah, she's moved, she's done a big move in and amongst all of that. And um, Taryn, you've just been amazing. So thank you so much for all of your support. So- uh, Thank you, Cordelia. It's been so much fun doing it with you. It's been, it has been fun. It has, we've had some laughs. Gordon, yeah. welcome. It's great to have you here. How are you doing? Howdy. Well, I'm much better knowing that somebody's moved to Scotland. That's a great thing. Am I allowed to ask where, Taryn? Roughly? I'm not asking for your full address. <laughs> no, we're in Edinburgh. Oh, well, it was good for the beginning. I'm West Coast, <laughs> so that's the wrong side of Scotland. I'm the Glasgow side. So, um, however, well done for almost getting it right. <laughs> oh, well, it's a good glad. start. It is a good start. It is a good start. So Gordon is um, a serial entrepreneur, has worked with some really big brands and specifically what Gordon has worked with a lot of business owners and big companies to do is to systemize and optimize so that you can get more done in less time, which is really important. How many of you are starting a business or running a business alongside working with, a, a, alongside a family that you're looking after drop a yes in the chat how many of you are starting this business alongside a full-time job or a part-time job or drop a yes in the chat how many of you are running a business alongside a family a job and you've got relatives to look after or maybe there's pets right time is something that we need more of time is something that we feel like we're running out of when we are running a business and something, it can put us under a lot of pressure. But what I would love you to know is that when I first started my business, I was working 13 hour shifts as a nurse. I had three kids under the age of four and I made it happen. And it's to do with what Gordon's gonna talk about today a little bit in and around the time side of things, but also how to not lose yourself in the process of all of this, because you are gonna be quite busy and you are gonna be quite stretched emotionally as you grow through the process of you know sales calls as we've just been discussing getting out in front of that camera etc and so there is no better person to speak into this than Gordon absolute expert when it comes to streamlining to getting time back for yourself and for your business but also not losing yourself in the process Gordon it's awesome to have you here I'm going to hand the floor over to you Thank you. Um, I would just say I've I've also got a win in the last week. Um, walking the talk, I have uh, just agreed to start a new business with somebody who I was inter introduced to three weeks ago, and um, we were we decided we we get together and see if we could do it. So this is something I do a lot. It's not uh, it's not something I've done way years past or something. So I've literally just agreed in the last week that I'm going to start a new joint venture business with somebody to bring something to market um, quite quickly this summer. So um, this is something I do a lot. This is what I love doing. And I love having a chat with people at you guys to see how we can actually have some material change. Right. Let me see if I can just share my screen with you. Hang on a second while I hit the button and share the right screen. It should let you, Gordon. I can't wait to hear more about this, though. I'm going to be DMing you later to hear all about <laughs> the adventure. Let me, just find the, let me find the share for this. Right. So, Cordelia, you're, you've got your mic on still, I see. Can you just tell me if you can see uh, the presentation screen with uh, the, all the you other governs around it? Awesome. Beautiful. Excellent. Right. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate um, the invitation to be here. Um, we're going to be looking at how to build a business without losing yourself. Now, this is a huge, huge topic. So obviously, there's only so much we can kind of squeeze into half an hour, but hopefully there'll be some insight that you'll be able to get that will be useful to you. OK, um, as I immediately, given I'm a techie guy, immediately lose the, the control in PowerPoint. There we go. Right. Cordelia, if you on mic again, can you see the introduction slide? Yeah, we're all good. Great, good stuff, right. So a very brief introduction about me. So um, my name's Gordon Grant. I've been married for 17 years. Um, I've got two boys and a dog. I've got over 20 years experience as a business consultant around the world. 
I have uh, built, sold successful businesses over that time. The one that's specifically of interest about this kind of topic is that I grew a small local business into a global software provider um, over the last 15 years. Um, during that, so when I started that business, it was a very local business in Farnham in Surrey in the south of England. Um, just one small office, a customer base of less than half a mile, half an hour's drive in any, any direction. And then by the time I sold and exited that business in 2020, we had staff in four continents with customers all over the world, and we were running 24-7 as a software business, supporting all these major global corporations. So that was a real success story. But during that time, it took its toll on me mentally and physically because I was just pouring so much into my, uh, into my career. When I met my wife, I said to her, I'm never going to be a guy who's married to, who's married to my job. I'm always going to be married to you and give you loads of time and attention. And then when my kids started to be born, I made a commitment to myself that I was going to be a dad to them and around for them. But I'm also really passionate about my businesses. So, and to my mind, it's like, there's like, it's like a stool with three legs. You've got the business, you've got your family, and you've got yourself. And most people get two of the three right, but maybe struggle with the third. So you can maybe think of people who run businesses and they're able to take care of themselves, but their relationships with their families aren't so good. They're not around, they miss lots of things. Or you might have somebody less likely who cares for themselves and their family, but doesn't really care for the business. That's probably going to be a recipe for disaster. Or the situation I was in, absolutely focused on my business, absolutely focused on my wife and my family, but totally lost my own identity in that process. I woke up one morning. This isn't me. This is my stunt double. I looked in the mirror and I just didn't recognize who I was. I actually didn't want to go to work. I didn't even want to get out of bed. I just realized I'm just fed up and the zest had gone and the interest had gone. And that was kind of a wake, a big wake up call to me. So I decided that with my business partner, we decided to sell the business, that business in 2018. We then worked an exit out for 2020. Now I'm currently very happily running three businesses. So I've got a property business, I've got a tech consultancy business, and I'm also a business mentor. Um, I'm a mentor with the, on a UK government business scheme for businesses up to 250 employees. But my particular focus is at the smaller end of that scale. Because when I had the software business, I was working for global companies and I was helping them to become more efficient and squeeze more money to the bottom line. But I wasn't seeing a material change in people. I wasn't seeing the real impact. I get a real kick and satisfaction from, see, from actually working with people and seeing them grow and see their businesses grow on a smaller scale. So that's what I do. I focus on people who are at the small end of that scale now. So one thing I've come up with, is I've got a whole kind of program that I take entrepreneurs and business owners through over a period of time. But one part of that is what's called the five P's. And this is where I break it down into personal plan, processes, programs, and people. So personal, how much do you know about yourself and how you operate and why you work that way? What are the plans that you've got for your business and for your life? And why are you so busy right now? Then looking at your processes, how are you running your business? This is possibly more geared to people who have got a business that's been going for a short while. And the process that got you to where you are might now be coming the glass ceiling that's preventing you make that next step. So looking at your processes, then looking at your programs, what are the, what are the, what's the tech available to us that we're able to use these days? And finally, looking at the people in your business, and that includes you. You'll have heard the, the cliche, but it's so true, working on your business rather than working in your business. And if you don't know what that is, working in your business is treating it like a job, except it's probably not a very good job because you used to work for somebody else and get paid, and then you could walk away at the end of the day. Now you've decided to be your own boss, but it's still a job, but now you can't escape from it because you've always got the pressure and stuff. So it's about finding a way to be able to run that business and grow the business more from a strategic perspective than actually being at the coal phase, having to do everything yourself. So let's look at phase, uh, P number one, which is personal, okay? You may, get, you may have heard of this. This is not something I've come up with. Orbed, if you were to take the letters Orbed and put them in a vertical column and draw a line between the R and the B, you would get Orbed. This is a concept called being above the line. This is where you need to, as a business owner, and in your life, so this is your personal life, your social life, your time management, but also how you run your business. This is about how you 
take ownership and accountability and responsibility for the situations that you find yourself in and making sure that you don't drop below the line into blame, excuses and denial. I caught up with a, a friend a few months ago who runs another business and we were just chatting and said, how's it going? And I was just telling her all the woes of one of the businesses I've got at that time. Um, and, and I should say, even though you know these things, it's, we're all fallible in terms of falling below the line uh, and getting this wrong. And I was just kind of having a moan. I was having a bad day probably. And she just looked at me and smiled and said, below the line. And I just stopped. I went, thank you. And she raised me back up so that I was thinking about, okay, how am I taking control of this situation? If you're a business owner, particularly if you're a solo entrepreneur, you're just starting out, you're going to get buffeted around by lots of stuff. Don't fall into the trap of blaming, blaming the, the situation that you find yourself in. Come up with excuses and denial. You need to take ownership and responsibility for what's happening. So I, my one big thing is make sure that you stay above the line in all the things that you do in your business. Also, be open to seeing things differently. Now, if you look at this, I'm sure you'll see it looks like a, a chessboard or a kitchen floor or something. You've got black and white squares and you've then got like a green vase or something or a tumbler casting a shadow. Now, our brains will always try to work ahead of us and help us to interpret what we're seeing so we can save time and make quick decisions. So our brains are almost certainly, all of us are looking at this and saying, yep, I can see alternate black and white squares in a grid and there's a shadow, but it's still the black and white squares. But now if I say to you, look at the square with the A and look at the square with the B. One, the A is clearly the black square and the B is clearly the white square. Except if I now draw the color between the two, you'll see they're both the same color. Now that maybe wasn't obvious, so just look at the A for a minute and I'll flick back and forward a few times. You'll see the A, the color's not changing between the diagonal and the square. And now look at the B, the color's not changing between the diagonal and the square. And now I'll leave the diagonal up again and you'll see that's the same color. Our brains saw something, made a decision about what, it, what we knew, and our brains are so powerful, and then we act on it. When you're running your business, you need to make sure that you're alert to the fact that your brain might be trying to take you down the wrong path. So be open to new challenges. Be open to seeing the, your current situation in a different way so that you're not being blinkered. You may be familiar with the concept of limiting beliefs. A limiting belief would be something that stops you achieving your potential. So a limiting belief might be I don't deserve to run a successful business. I don't deserve to earn lots of money. I don't deserve to have employees. But it could also be uh, limiting about other people. You could say, I, um, nobody else is as good as me, so I can never employ anyone because they always get things wrong. That's a limiting belief, and you're not leveraging the, the benefit of having other people. So that limiting belief is stopping you growing your business and your business growing and is keeping you at the coal face however many hours a day because nobody else is ever good enough. So we need to be aware when we're thinking about our personal personality and what makes us tick about our limiting beliefs. Another thing with limiting beliefs, don't listen to others who say you can't because almost every time what they really mean is I can't and you're different to them. So if they think that they can't run a business or try and uh, quit a full-time job to try something new. What they really mean is they can't do that. So don't just be careful that you don't take on other people's limiting beliefs. Some of you might recognize the photograph here. We've got Roger Bannister. I, actually, I should say, Cordelia didn't say I speak very quickly in a Scottish accent. Taryn probably hasn't learned the Scottish Glaswegian accent that much yet, but I will speak quickly. I'm trying to speak slowly, but I just really, really passionate about this. On the picture there, we've got Roger Bannister. Roger Bannister ran the first recorded sub four minute mile in 1954. For centuries and millennia, nobody had been recorded running that. And in fact, the perceived wisdom was that nobody could beat the four, beat the four minute mile. And in fact, to try and do so was detrimental to your health. But he decided that he could do it. And on the 6th of May, 1954, he did it. Wow, the first person, the only person ever to do it, no one else is ever gonna do it again, because he's unique except 46 days later, the Australian John Landy did it. Now, how did John Landy manage to suddenly do it? It's because he saw that Roger Bannister had done it. 
And he realized that was a limiting belief. And it wasn't just these two guys who were miraculously at the same time in, in history and able to do the same feat. Another 15 people broke the four minute mile in the next three years because their limiting beliefs were removed. Another thing to think about is who are your five? There's a concept that whether it's five, seven or 12, depending who you read, you are the average of the five people who you hang out with the most. Now, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, who are you hanging out with? Are they people who are scared of stepping out? Are they people who are negative about life? Are they people who have got a specific view on life? Just think, who is it that you hang out with the most? And what impact are they having upon your perspective on your life, your personal life, your social life, your business life, and your goals? Another thing to think about would be a great website called 16 Personalities. If you've never done it after this, I'd encourage you go and have a look at 16personalities.com. This is the, the digits 16 and personalities.com. You'll see the address at the bottom left of the screen there. Go to that website, grab a coffee, take 15 minutes of your time, and it'll ask you just over 100 questions. And when you answer those questions, it's going to give you a result that tells you which of those 16 personality types you are. Now, this isn't like the horoscopes you get in the newspapers where they're written in such a vague way that it's always applicable to everybody. These are quite specific and scientific. And I would encourage you, if you're working on your own in a business, do this so that you can understand how you view the world and interact with the world. If you're working with a business partner or maybe even in your family, maybe encourage them to do it. One of my friends did this with his family over Christmas to see, and they were all just amazed at how accurate it was, and it showed them how each of them interacted with the world. So have a look at 16personalities.com, it's free. Another thing I would say is look at your performance curve. We are all different. So first thing to do is identify your top priorities. What are the top priorities that you need to do in your business every week? Now park that for a minute and think, when do you perform these tasks best? Are you somebody who wakes up in the morning and just greets the day and is all fired up? Or are you somebody who hits the snooze button and can't believe that it's time for the morning again? At the other end of the spectrum, are you somebody who at the end of the day is happy to do detailed reports and analysis and stuff at the very end of the day? Or are you more like me and you're knackered if you look at detail too late in the evening? The thing you need to do is schedule your tasks for your peak performance. You are a business owner. You are in charge. You're the one that chooses what you do when you do it. So if you're no good at doing admin in the evening, a bit like me, don't do it in the evening. Work out when you are good at doing it and schedule it into your diary. Put it in first. Haven't got time to go into the concept of uh, rocks, pebbles, and sand, but there's a concept. If you have a search on the internet or chat to me afterwards, I can explain about that's how you, the, the, the sequence and the priority that you put things in your diary. If you don't put those important tasks in your diary for the time that suits you, you'll have to fit them in at the times that don't suit you. And that becomes a pressure, a stress. You don't do them so well. Everything just starts to lose its fun. So I'd encourage you, think of the tasks that you need to do every week and work out for you alone when is the best time to do them and put them in the diary first and let other stuff fall around them rather than them falling around other stuff. I would also suggest that you get a coach. Get a coach to help you bring forward and grow your ideas. If you think about it, Usain Bolt um, passed, uh, broke the 100 meters world record in I think it was 2008 or something, he first broke it, okay? On the 31st of May. And the 1st of June, he sacked his coach because he'd achieved it. No, he didn't. He kept his coach and he kept going. He'd reached one goal. He wanted to get to the next. In fact, he went on to break the 100 meter world record on two further occasions. Get a coach and have somebody who's alongside you and is supporting you in this journey. Yes, you can do it on your own. And yes, you might say, isn't it obvious Gordon saying get a coach because he's a coach. Yes, it's obvious. I'm not saying get me, but get somebody who can get alongside you and really help you to achieve your goals faster. There's then a concept called Eat That Frog. You may have heard of this book by Brian Tracy. It's this weird thing where you say, we've all got something that we don't want to do in the day and it's weighing us down. 
And all day we're thinking, oh, I'm going to have to do that. It might be I'm going to have to speak to that customer who's really grumpy and I'm going to have to apologize to them or I'm going to have to do my admin or my bookkeeping or something or have a conversation with a supplier or whatever. And it weighs you down. And all day, the day you just know the day is going to get worse because you're, you're leading towards that thing. What Brian Tracy says is identify that frog, identify that thing and do it first in the day. Because as horrible as eating a frog is, once you've done it, the day isn't going to get any worse. The day is going to get better. And you've also ticked it off your list. So identify the frogs that you've got in your days and do them first. Also, do you ever book a silent hour or ghost meetings in your diary? I was chatting to a lady who owns a business recently and she said, oh, do you know, when I go into the office every day, it can be three or four o'clock in the afternoon before I get rid of everybody else's stuff and I start to work on my own to do. And then I'm working into the evening doing the stuff I wanted to do. And I said, why are you going into the office? You've trained your staff that, they'll, that they can come to you with all their problems and, and you'll solve them. Don't go into the office then. Work from home for an hour or two or for the whole day and focus on you. If your best potential client phoned up and said, I'm coming to see you at nine o'clock tomorrow morning, I need you to be prepared for a pitch, you would probably down tools and make sure that nobody bothered you so that you could focus on that for the benefit of yourself and your business. But why do you treat yourself so poorly and why is your self-worth so low that you always let other people interrupt and ruin your kind of the peak times in your performance curve? So I would encourage you, book a silent hour or ghost meetings or whatever into your diary that allows you to make sure that your time is protected. If you haven't read the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey, I would thoroughly recommend it. I'm going to pull out three very quickly. Number one, be proactive. Nobody's going to do this for you. Nobody's going to take the responsibility for you growing your business and being successful and managing your time and having time for your family and for yourself, except you. So be proactive and make plans to do this and begin with the end in mind. If you think of, uh, depending what you read on the internet, uh, a boat leaving Southampton, going to New York, for example, depending who you read, 90% of the time or 97% of the time or 99% of the time, it's actually off course in terms of it's not pointing at New York because the waves are battering it, the tides against it, storms are coming and going. And all the whole time, the captain is having to course correct to make sure that they still get to New York. That's like us in our businesses. If we don't know where we're trying to go and we don't check up on our progress, we're going to end up way off course. And then we're going to think, how did I get here? So make sure that you know where you want to go and make sure you're checking in with yourself. Brian, uh, Stephen Covey says that um, all things are created twice. Before we act, we should act in our minds first. Don't just act it. Think first, then act it. Is this how I want it to go? Are these the correct consequences? Is this how I want to see my business progressing? And he also talks about first things first, which is a bit like uh, Brian Tracy's Eat That Frog. Moving on to the second step, which is the plan. Bill Gates says most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. What are you planning for your business? Do you have a plan? Here we are on the 1st of March. That's as a sixth of the way through the year. Are you on plan for your business? Do you know where you should be by this point in the year? Do you know where you're going by the end of the year? Have you actually made that commitment to yourself? Have you broken it down into bite-sized chunks so that you can actually get there? Some people talk about five-year plans, 10-year plans, three-year plans. I'm not a huge fan of them. If they work for you, superb. They don't work for me. The best I can do is a 12-month plan, a one-year plan. Beyond that, I'm just spending time, and to my mind, I'm spending time planning something that I've no idea if it's going to happen or not, because so many things will happen between now and then. But I know that between now and 12 months, I've got a fair idea how things are going to go. And then I break it down into 90 days, 60 days, and 30 days. And I create a baseline of today, so I know where I am. And then I have steps, little, little steps that get me each day or each week towards my goal. And I check in after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to see my progress. I don't know if you ever saw years ago, that I, they may still do it. You had um, uh, toothpaste for whitening your teeth, teeth whitening toothpaste, I don't know if it's probably called. And they would give you a chart of different colors of your teeth. And they would say, before you start using this, work out which color you are. Oh, I'm number four. Okay. Then use our toothpaste for two weeks and then check again. 
The reason they did that was we, our brains are really clever, but they're really bad at remembering things. And we forget where we started from. So people would use the toothpaste for two weeks and go, no, my teeth haven't changed. That didn't work. I want my money back. So by helping people to get a baseline of, oh, you're number four on the chart and then use it for two weeks. Oh, I'm number seven. I can see that I've made progress. It's really important that when you're running your business, you create a baseline of where you are and you recognize and celebrate your progress. Have a plan for how you're going to celebrate when you hit your milestones. That's something that we don't do a lot. A lot of us, when we run our own businesses, we treat ourselves as free labor and we always we almost feel guilty that we can never take time off. What if you set yourself a goal that you're going to have a certain number of sales or do something by, us by the end of the month? How are you going to celebrate when you get to the end of the month? Come up with a plan and actually do it. And maybe share it with your family, with your friends. We are going to do this together. Or maybe just do something yourself. Entirely up to you. You also need to... Um, I recommend you, you do SMART goals. You may have heard of this. SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Um, I'm aware of the time, so I'm just going to very quickly run through this one. Basically, it's how will you know if you've done the goal? So I'm going to give you a specific example in a minute. But the first thing is watch out for your mischievous genie. He gives you what you ask for, but not what you want. For example, he hears your goal of, I want to earn more money this year, and he helps you to earn one pound more. He's achieved it. You wanted to earn more money and you've got a pound more. So make sure that your goals explain exactly what you want, how you want to get it, and when you want it by. You may have heard of something called your reticular activating system. And this is all mindset stuff here, but it's very, very, it's part of your brain, the reticular activating system. Have you ever bought a car, driven off the forecourt, and between driving off the forecourt and getting to your house, you suddenly realize, oh, there's my car. Oh, there's my car. Where are all these people driving my car all of a sudden? You've never seen them before, but suddenly you can see these cars all around. Or maybe at the bottom left of the screen, there's a yellow suitcase that you want to buy because you're fed up having the black suitcase when you get to the conveyor belt in the airport and everyone's got black suitcases. You go, I'm going to buy a yellow suitcase. That's different. And then the next time you go to the airport, there's a family walking in front of you with a yellow suitcase. Can't believe it. That's because your reticular activating system has filtered out that information previously, but now is allowing it to come through so that you're conscious of it. Our brains receive 16 million pieces of information every second, which is far too much for us to cope with. So our brains filter out almost all of that. And your reticular activating system, or your RAS, takes what you focus on and creates a filter to allow it through. Let me give you an example. You've all been listening to me just now, and presumably you've all got a right foot or a left foot, and you've got a shoe or a sock or something on it, or you can feel the carpet or the floor around it. Now, can you feel that around your foot? What does it feel like? Your skin has been feeling whatever it is that's touching your foot all through this presentation, but your brain's been filtering out those signals until I mentioned it, but now you're thinking of your foot you can actually feel it. That's because your reticular activating system in your brain has opened a filter that allows that information through. So we need to do this when we're having SMART goals. For example, I'm going to, at the top, num goal number one, I'm going to get fit. Oh, so many people say this at the beginning of the year, I'm going to get fit. Are you? How are you going to know when you've got there? You don't even know what you say you're going to do or how you're going to measure it or when you're going to do it by. So then a slightly better version is, hmm, I'm going to, I'm going to start running. Okay, well, that's, at least we know what you're going to do. How will we not running? What, two steps? I'm going to run two miles. I'm going to be able to run two miles every day. A better white version of that would be, I'm going to be able to run two miles every day by the 30th of September. If you're growing your business and you want to free up time so you don't lose yourself in the business, make sure that you're choosing smart goals. The killer question that I love when you're planning your business is, what would it take to whatever? I'll give you a simple example. Uh, one of my businesses is a property business. And typically in the UK, it might take, say, four months to buy a, a residential property with a mortgage. And I'll go to my, my solicitor and say, right, I want to buy this in 28 days. And they'll laugh and say, that's not possible, Gordon. And I say, OK, I know that. But what would it take to buy that property in 28 days? And then they ream off a list of things that would have to happen. Now, they think they're giving me a, re a list of reasons why it won't happen. I've been writing it down and I've now got a to-do list that I put in my plan because I know that if I deliver all these things, I'll be able to buy that property in 28 days. 
So I would encourage you when you're thinking about your business, when you're dealing with business partners or when you're just thinking about yourself, ask the killer question, what would it take to achieve whatever your goal is? And then see if you can free your mind to start thinking creatively about that. You need to protect your time. Big problem for entrepreneurs. You know, 72% of entrepreneurs suffer from some mental kind of uh, mental illness or mental affliction because we're really bad at petitioning our lives and taking care of ourselves. So three quick tips. Number one, create a schedule. Establish firm boundaries for when you take priority. For, 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 for Establish firm boundaries for when you take priority over your business. For example, a Friday night, I'm turning my phone off and I'm not looking at those emails or taking that call or those text messages. I'm not doing it on the weekend when I'm playing football with my kids or whatever. Number two, delegate tasks. Be clear which tasks other people can do and stick to them. Don't let them off the hook. Don't say, oh, I'll just do it. No, delegate to other people and be strong. You're the business owner. And prioritize self-care. The number of people who run a business and don't take care of themselves, it's crazy. You take care of everybody else who's ever going to work for you or be involved with you, but you don't take care of yourself. Prioritize self-care because if you're taking care of yourself, you're then better able to take care of other people. The third one is processes. If we look at our processes, then why do you do what you do in your business? There's a concept called the five whys. This is where you just ask the question why up to five times. So you say, um, why do we do this? Oh, because we've always done it that way. Yeah, but why have we always done it that way? Well, because we used to have a system in finance that worked a certain way and it needed us to do that. But why are we still? And you just ask the question why five times to get right down to the real reason why you're doing something. Also think, take a step back. If you want to work on your business rather than in your business, imagine you had a magic wand. What would awesome look like in your business right now? What would that be? If, this, if you had a magic wand, what would you start doing that you're not doing just now? What would you stop doing? Or what would you change? And another way to look at your processes is to say, I've got a blank piece of paper. For some reason, the business is closed today and we have to restart the whole business tomorrow from scratch with nothing. How would you design it for where you are now rather than where you were when you set the business up? So look at your business and critically look at the processes you've got and everything that you've got, all the systems, and make sure that you are designing your processes for the business you want to have, not the business you used to have or currently have. Now, I'm going to run through some programs very quickly here. This is a bit of a blast. Don't worry, as in blast through quickly. Um, I'm really passionate about technology, and I'm really passionate about entrepreneurs and solopreneurs harnessing the cool tech there's never been a better time for running a business than just now, I believe, in terms of technology. We've got so much available at our fingertips and it's so cheap. You used to have to pay thousands of pounds for software. Now you can get stuff for 10 quid a month. So I'm going to show you these very quickly. If anyone wants to know about these uh, in detail, contact me afterwards. I'll happy to send you the list and explain to you. I've used all of these so I can, I can kind of vouch for all of them. Firstly, if you're wanting to have branding for your business, but you're not creative, Maybe go and have a look at color.adobe.com, color spelt the American way, and then go to create at the top and click, I think it's, um, oh, I can't remember, it begins with E, you forgot what the, the option is, explore or something or expand or something. Just upload a photo and it will create a harmonious color palette for you from that photo. So if you've got a photo that really looks nice and makes you feel is kind of on brand with you, upload the photo and for free, Adobe will tell you what the colors are and suddenly you've got a color palette. Another one is coolers.co, C-O-O-L-O-R-S. The address is up at the top left. It's a free website. It just keeps spitting out new color palettes. So if creativity is something you've struggled with and you don't really want to pay somebody to do it, go and have a look at coolers.co and color.adobe.com. Another one I'm sure you've heard of, very popular, canva.com. It's free or you can pay £100 a year for the pro license. This allows you to create artwork, to flyers, leaflets, um, social media posts, graphics, all that stuff. And it's done, it's, the templates are already created. So you just type in the information you want and you've suddenly got really great artwork. Pexels.com is a free website if you want to have uh, free professional photographs or videos that you want to add to your social media or your uh, PowerPoint presentations or whatever, or on your website. Epidemic Sound, <clears throat> excuse me, gives you great access to really high quality professional audio and sounds that you could add to your website or your presentations. 
if you want to actually do a bit of creative stuff yourself, a tool that I've used for oh, must be 10 years is called paint.net. It's a Windows only platform. If you go to getpaint.net, you can download this free thing. It's very like Adobe Photoshop, but it's free. And I'm Scottish, so I'm a big fan of free. An app that I use all the time is InShot.com. It's on uh, iOS and Android. It's £14 a year. I'll tell you how I use it. I go to, um, I go for a walk with my dog every morning. And before I start walking the dog, I'm not really sure what I'm going to talk about on social media. As I'm walking, I think, up, yeah, that's the topic I'm going to talk about today. I then record a series of short videos, short snippets, like one sentence at a time. I then quickly, and on my phone, while I'm walking the dog, I fire up the InShot app and I just edit them together. I then run it into another app called captions.ai, which I paid 50 quid for the year. And it creates the, the text captions and puts it on top of the video. And then I upload it to Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, whatever. So by the time I've walked the dog in the morning, I started the walk not knowing what I was going to talk about. And by the end of it, I'm published on five or six social media platforms looking really professional. And I've just used a couple of apps that are really quite cheap. I don't have to pay a high big team, big high end creative team to do it. I can do that as I'm walking the dog. Another one is headliner.app, which will help you get subtitles for things. I'm going to go quickly now. Rev. You might think I'm already going quickly. Rev.com is a great one for transcribing. If you've got audio where you were chatting to somebody or you were explaining something, you just upload the, the clip and it will create the text for you for subtitles. If you want to have some audio on social media with a professional uh, uh, voiceover artist, they're actually not that expensive. Go to voices.com, find somebody that works for your kind of branding, and then you can use that. Suddenly you've got access to great content and you have to pay a bucket load. I love this one, but it's really quite scary. Descript.com. You can upload a recording of yourself so that this website is trained on how, to, how you speak. You can then give it some text, some new text that you've never spoken before, and it will play it back to you as you speaking the text. Now, some ethical things you may want to consider. Potentially, you could uh, be pretending to be somebody else, so let's not go near that just now. But I think this is really powerful. If you're somebody who would like to be more active on social media, but you're not sure how to do it, or you're a bit scared or something, why not just record yourself speaking, train the system how you speak, and then just give it the text, and it will do the speaking for you. Audacity is a free audio program if you ever want to get into podcasting so that you can edit the quality of your sound. You don't have to go and pay expensive audio edit engineers, although they can be very helpful. If you want to do email marketing, then aweber.com is a great site for email marketing so you can start emailing your customers and keeping in touch with them. Another one is calendly.com, which is great for your calendar. You send out a link and say, hey, if you want to book a meeting with me, click the link and see my calendar and just book in. You can get the free version. How cool is that? You don't need to have a whole team supporting you. You can just ping that out to people and people can book in when it suits them. In the business opportunity that I've just started last week with uh, this guy I've met, um, we decided we needed to build an online course very quickly. Within 24 hours, I had a website up and running with a full course and all the branding on it, and it's 24 quid a month. I literally went to LearnDash, and they do the hosting for me. They've built the website for me. They do all the security and maintenance. They do all the payment processing, and now people are able to go to this website and sign up for our course without us having to do anything else apart from 24 quid a month and pay a very small transaction fee on the credit card when the, they make a payment. How cool is that? Years ago, you'd have paid thousands of pounds for this kind of stuff. And then one of my absolute favorites is jasper.ai. You may have heard of chat GPT recently and stuff. Jasper.ai, 40 quid a month, will create astonishingly good copy for you. If you want to be pushing out and uh, sales marketing letters, emails, social media, go and look at some of the AI text generators now. This is the one I recommend. I know Cordelia has used it as well. It's really good. But, um, there, are, there are plenty others, but this is the one I can personally recommend. It's great. Um, my favorite website for creativity, and it's not all about creativity, is elements.envato.com. For £13 a month, I get access to all the stock images I want, stock videos I want, fonts, templates for websites, templates for uh, graphics media, for Adobe, uh, uh, Photoshop, and all that kind of stuff, Illustrator. £13 a month, I think it's an absolute steal, this website. I've been using it for donkey's years, okay? 
I would also suggest if you want to work with other people in your business, get a shared calendar set up, maybe something like Google Calendar, which is free, where you can all start to put the meetings in and you can see who's working on what and um, who's, who's doing what when, okay? Clockify, another free website you could use. If you want to track how much time you're spending on your business or how much maybe some of your team or freelancers are spending, use Clockify and you can track your time for free. Another one, I'm just coming to the end of the, of the app, um, is loom.com. If you're interested in working out, getting somebody to work for you, but you want to tell them how you do certain things, instead of writing a really long manual, just start using whatever the software you've got on your laptop is or your computer or whatever, and use loom.com to record a video of the screen. And you can send them it and say, this is how I want you to use the finance system or whatever. And Cordelia is watching the clock for me, so I'm on my last one. People is a really important thing when you're growing your business. One of the biggest challenges I find for entrepreneurs and solopreneurs is knowing how to scale their business. Are you all going in the right direction? Do the people in your team have the right skills? When should you start outsourcing to people? Or are you just wearing all the hats yourself? Is that a sustainable thing for your business? Is that how you're going to have a happy life when you're having to do absolutely everything in the business yourself? If you think about it, the lady at the bottom right is the business owner. She can spend lots of time doing something, but she's actually not very good at creative marketing or bookkeeping or whatever. So the quality of her output isn't great, but she spends a lot of time doing it. Whereas she could work with the lady, a freelancer at the top left, who doesn't take much time to do it, doesn't cost much. There's no ongoing cost if you don't use her, but the quality is very high. Last two websites, I think, for you to think about. Fiverr.com, if you would like to find somebody to work with you to help you to create some marketing or to do some admin for you or your bookkeeping or whatever, Fiverr might be a good website to look at. This is the one I haven't used. Of all this, I haven't used Fiverr.com. I've never used it. I know people who like it. I prefer to use a website called Upwork.com. I've got freelancers working for me just now all over the world doing various things. And the really cool thing is, I only pay them for the time they spend on the job. So I don't have to fill their time because I'm, oh, I'm paying for them. I'm only paying them for the hours that they're actually working for me. So I think Upwork is a fantastic website and actually really high caliber people there. Lastly, who fills your cup? As an entrepreneur, you need to take care of yourself. I would really, really encourage you, find your community. Maybe it's all the SWIC people. Ensure that you hang out with people like you who are trying to go in the same direction of you and who are encouraging you. Find yourself a mastermind. That's a group of people who are, you're going to work together to help each other. So get in the right room with the right people. I would encourage you to find an accountability group or to build one. Those are people who you can meet with maybe once a week or whatever, and you're going to be able to say, hey, you were going to do the following last week. Have you done it? And then you can encourage each other and hold each other accountable. Because being a solopreneur or an entrepreneur can be a really lonely thing. And lastly, I would encourage you to work with a coach or a mentor. Find somebody who you can build rapport with and who will drive you forward. Now, again, I said before, I'm sure you're thinking, hey, isn't it obvious he would say that because he's a coach and a mentor? Yeah, I guess it is. But it's because I know that it works. Find somebody who can work with you and they will drive you towards your goals faster than you're ever going to do on your own. So in summary, you need to make sure you're looking at your personal aspect. You need to look at... Um, how do you operate? Why do you operate that way? And make sure that you are in control and above the line for how you're running your business. Make sure you've got a plan. Make sure you know that you're trying to get to New York in the boat rather than just drifting in the Atlantic, seeing where the waves take you. Review your processes to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Are you still doing the right thing? Or are those processes that got you to where you are now the things, as I said, that are going to stop you getting to the next level? Are you using the best programs? I know I spent a lot of time on that. I'm a big fan of harnessing the power of, of tech. And also, are you using the right people? So if, if you're interested in this type of thing, if you'd like to work with me, then Cordelia has asked me, and Alex have asked me to um, uh, open up a couple of slots in my diary. So if you're interested and you'd like to, the orange text bit.ly.com slash swick dash Gordon one, which is all lowercase, um, is a link to a page where you can fill in some information and find out more. I work with people for in a 12 week slots of 12 weeks where I work with them one to one to help them to baseline where they are, come up with a plan, 
and then keep them on track so they get to New York or whatever their goal is in the 90 days. And if you'd like to ask me any questions about any of this, then please feel free to ping me an email to success at dadsmeanbusiness.com. Cordelia always laughs because I always try and cram too much into the short, short amount of time. But um, if you guys have any questions about how to run a business, but also to make sure you don't lose yourself, as I did a number of years ago, then please feel free to fire some questions just now. Cordelia. That was awesome, Gordon. I love that. that, that is, is that the picture that was taken at the, um, at the meetup we had in Oxford? Um, that's a Kate, that's a Katie Needle photo. <laughs> we had Katie Needle here last, last week or the week before. Um, Gordon, that was fantastic. Thank you so, so much for that. So much crammed into there, but it was a great pace and loads of really great content. I personally love hearing about the tech side of things. I didn't realize Descript d- does that already. It's That's scary. Really cool. it is, it's scary, but actually, so I've actually got a friend who decided as a, as, a, as a test to create a podcast using AI to create the text. He didn't write the podcast, and then he used the script to speak the, the AI text in his voice. So he's got a podcast, which he actually hasn't spoken or written the words for. That's How you maybe feel about the ethics on that, I'm not sure, but it's a, it shows the tech is capable of it. I know it's like now you'll you'll hear someone say, "Oh, I wrote a book," and you're going, "Yeah, but did you write the book, or did Chat GPT write the book?" <laughs> We're going to start questioning that. It's like you know, like when you go to the supermarket and you get hand picked flowers, and it has hand picked. There was like human written book going to be written on books from now on. Um, but yeah, Gordon, thank you so much. Has anyone got any questions? We do have a couple of minutes for some Q&A. If anybody has any questions, hit the raise hand button or drop them in the chat and we will get them answered. I've been keeping an eye on the chat and none came through whilst we were going through. So there's not a not a backlog to go through, but please do share or ask if you've got any questions that you would like to ask Gordon. Now is your time whilst we have him. Um, Julian says gold dust Gordon I look onward to listening to the replay at double speed (laughs) (laughs) Um, fan of GTD what is that what's that GTD elaborate Darren what's GTD what do you mean chat GPT (laughs) I keep I hear people call chat GPT all sorts of things all week all the letters of the alphabet is that what you meant no, getting getting things done by Dave Allen. So it's very okay. much a sort of uh, book that was uh, quite a few years back, which is uh, everybody, you know, dealing with productivity. Um, but also I think another thing is like Build a Second Brain is another sort of uh, great book, which is hitting um, the sort of productivity sort of circles, Tiago Forte. Absolutely. Uh, all of these things. I- there are there are so many of them, but I'm a fan of anything that helps us individually move forward. And because we're all different, certain things work for certain people. But yeah, I'm a big fan of anything that drives people forward and it gets them to achieve their potential and hit their goals faster. Awesome. Um, someone's asked, what's the price per session? That that calendar link is 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 free. There's no price for that. So if you would like to have a chat with Gordon, then you can book into that calendar um ping me a, actually ping me a message if you want to ping me a message at success uh, let me type it into the chat success at dadsbeanbusiness.com ping me a message and we can have a chat absolutely boom any more questions from you guys well gordon thank you so much where can we find you on socials linkedin I um so you'll yes. find me on you find me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a lot. Um I'm on Facebook, uh, you'll find me on Instagram. I'm generally Mr. Gordon Grant is one of the things, or Gordon G on LinkedIn. Um feel free to to link in. And I'd love to have a chat with you guys. Basically, I love to hear stories of entrepreneurs who are building businesses and growing businesses. That, 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 that's what I, a real kick out of. Oh. Yeah. And he's really freaking good at it. So go check out the content coming out on LinkedIn. I've just dropped the post in the chat. Sabina wants to ask me a question. Go for it. I'm here. Hi, Cordelia. How are you? Hello. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Everything that you said was really useful. And I'm going to go away and think uh, exactly where I want to be and how to get there. Um, Cordelia, I'm in a similar position to you. But, you know, as you said, when you started off, 
Mm-hmm. I have two kids um, who are homeschooled and, you know, the house. And I just realized that actually for two weeks running, I didn't do enough washing. So every day, like, we're like, where's the clothes? Where's the clothes? Where are enough clothes to wear? Um, <laughs> Okay, so I'm just wondering, when did you, or did you, how did you do it? Did you decide to get help? And so I have somebody coming in two days a week, um, but it's just not enough. I want this, I want my business to go. I want it to move. I want to get there. Mm, I want to I get more you. clients. I want to get my ads set up and my webinar set up and everything. Um, but did you, I just don't know whether I should have the mindset. Okay, right. I'm going to invest more money into getting you know, cleaners, childcare, et cetera, so that I can free myself up to do the thing that I want to do and the thing that will bring me revenue and just trust that the revenue will come or whether I wait, go slower, get the client slowly, which I am doing, and then pay as I go kind of thing, pay for, you know, childminders and cleaners and, and whatever else. I, I just, I feel really, really stuck, honestly. Bless you. It's so difficult, isn't it? When you've got stuff you really want to get on with and you feel like you're being held back by, you know, just the responsibilities that you've got. And at the same time, that creates a lot of guilt because you're like, yeah, but they're my babies and I love them. And I don't Oh my God, it's the guilt is killing me. Yeah, I hear you. But it's for them. And then you go, but it's for them that I want to build this future. And you end up with this back and forth tennis game of guilt and self-reassurance. Gordon's also a really great person to speak into this because he, he he's specifically been working with dads in business and dads that want to spend more time with family as well. So I'd love to hear your perspective on this, Gordon. My perspective is this, sweetheart, is that you have a limited amount of time right now. And actually, let's reframe that. That's a really good thing because you could probably, you know, buy, like pay for all this help and get all these people in and, you know, then could create maybe eight hours a day to work on your business but you're probably going to spend six of them doing the stuff that isn't actually going to make a difference so what you can do is you can sit and have a look at all the things that you need to be doing to get yourself on the map in your business whether that's your webinars whether that's your social media content whether that is you know have a make a big list of things and have a look and prioritize which of these things is going to move the needle on the progress now Moving the needle, we want to specifically be looking at revenue because if you can generate revenue from, well, profit as well, but also, you know, things that are going to bring money in basically as part of a priority, because if you can get yourself to a place where this is now generating money, that's going to also allow you to bring in some more support, right? Mm -hmm. But if you sit and prioritize, you can do this on just a couple of hours a day. You can, but it's going to be tricky because you're homeschooling. Now, I was never that brave. I will always allow schools to take my children and have them for as long as they agree to. Um, Because, you know, and and I've always had a bit of help in terms of, you know, they go to their dad. Um, When I was living with him at the beginning, before we ended up getting divorced, that's a whole nother story. But when I was, he would, he would have the children for me whilst I was at work on the ward. And then when I was at home, I'd quite often be breastfeeding with a laptop in front of me (laughs) I'm not even joking so you've got to you've got to find every spare second you've got to have a look at your time you've got to optimize it you've got to go what are the priorities and then also what can I give up on because I used to have a husband that required restaurant quality dinner to be on the table every single evening in order for him to be happy and I said to him look I'm sorry honey but that's going to have to stop because I don't have enough time so I gave up on cooking like I would spend hours in the kitchen all day I gave up on that I stopped that and I also stopped watching tv and then I looked at the time I had left and I went right what is the priority here what do I need to focus on and just to round this off one of my good friends Mr Dan Holloway who's come in and spoken at the Sell What You Know show before he he was a single guy working in software sales and he quit his business. He Sorry, he quit his job to work on his business and he had 14 hours, 14 solid hours a day to work on his, on his business. And when we looked at his results versus my results with all the pressure I was under, I actually made the big sale first. How is that possible when he had so much time? It's because I was being smart with my time and I was working on the things that were going to make a difference. Whereas he was probably spending 10 of those 14 hours on things that didn't matter, messing about with hashtags, messing about with building websites, you know? So that would be my advice to you. You've got this. You can totally do this 100%. It's just about being smart with that time. Gordon, anything you would add? 
I think kids are a huge blessing and mm. I think we need to recognize how special they are and the time that we spend with them actually is really, really important for their lives and for our relationships in our lives. But so don't undervalue the time you're spending with them. I know doing the chores and the washing and stuff, it's like, but, but you know what? That's what needs, needs to be done to help your, our kids grow and be stable and successful and stuff. I would say don't rush to spend money on ads and stuff if you haven't worked out the business model. The best, and, and other people love different, well, different advice, okay? But work out what your project plan is if you had to do it all yourself and then use money to expedite that. Don't, to, don't change it. So work out what needs to be done. And also think about what's called the minimum viable product. And um, there's a guy, I think he's called um, Reid Hoffman, I think, is one of the co-founders of LinkedIn. And he said, if you waited until your product was perfect before you launched, you waited too long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just get started with the minimum viable product. That's what I'm doing with this business. I'm just starting, right? It's not the perfect product, but we're going to get something out there that is value for money and then do it. So I would say don't rush to spend money, but also don't undervalue the, the gift of having your kids mm -hmm. and, and, and pouring time into them. But I know it's a challenge. Um, but yeah, no, what's the minimum you, guys, you have to do? Sorry. I think listening to you guys, I can, yeah, I, I think I can be a bit more um, focused. And even just using the time that I do have, I think sometimes we wait to have that hour free or to have that hour and a half free. But actually, probably I can start recording my webinar even if I had 20 minutes free. <laughs> um, yeah. Break also things down into little steps. Break things down into tiny steps, you know. If, if, if recording the webinar is one step, that's too much. You're giving yourself a mountain to climb. Break it down into smaller things, right? Um, it could be that you record it in sections. Just always make sure you're wearing the right clothes and you're sitting in the same clothes and you're sitting in the same place. But you could do that, right? Okay. You could record, you could break it down into sections. But also mm. there's like recording it, then there's editing it. You know, you can chunk all of that down. And if you just get a couple of those little bits every day, done every day, by the end of the week, you'll have got seven lots of bits done and actually have been moved forward quite fast rather than sitting down looking at, create webinar ah I haven't got time for that oh my god that's really overwhelming no I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait until I've got some more time and I can actually like spend some time chunking it down so it's act actionable steps that are going to give you a little dopamine hit every time you tick one of them off and that's celebrate them celebrate yes. them yeah I'm rubbish at celebrating I'm rubbish at, I've got nine clients now and it's only when I got to the ninth one that I decided okay I'm gonna celebrate so <laughs> <laughs> you're already crushing it girls like seriously yeah. like jason's I, cheering I know, you this is all like this is all like organic marketing with the people that i have and i just want to go you know i want to go bigger because i think there's other people that won't be so hard to convert honey you will always want to go bigger you'll sabina, always let's celebrate go let's celebrate for sabina she hasn't got time <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny yeah but yeah, thank you so much I have so much takeaway I talked to people about smart targets but I actually forgot to have one myself so thank you Gordon we do, yeah, yeah we do that huh we do that we, we sometimes we're so good at helping other people and we forget to do the same stuff for ourselves I'm so glad you came out and asked the question thank you for being vulnerable and sharing I'm sure there's loads of people here that that feel that as well you know want to get moving but feeling like it's just moving too slow like going for a tree call and and I hear you I hear you I'm very ambitious and very impatient <laughs> so I hear you uh, anyway Gordon thank you so much for your time guys we are over the top of the hour I am so sorry I'm I reckon we could probably open up to have a nice long hour-long conversation about this quite easily um but it is the final Swick show of season two. It's been a freaking pleasure to run. I bloody love this space. I'm going to miss you guys next week. And um, if you want to stay in touch, you can ping, like follow me on Instagram, ping me a message over on Instagram. I'm at cordelia.kate over there. Um, or just search for Cordelia Kate and you'll find me because I have such a weird name. Um, but yeah, it would be really good to, um, to stay in touch. And I will be back, I'm sure, with season three of the Sell What You Know show very soon. And we will let you know when that is. But until then, have an amazing week. Have an amazing rest of what is now March. And we will see you very soon. Go crush it, guys. Thank you so much to Gordon. Thank you for your time. Lots and lots of love.